Alrighty, folks, we are live. We have a very special guest uh, in the green room uh, behind us here. His name is RH Max. Uh, I've had the pleasure of going on his uh, his channel a couple times in the past, and now I will have the pleasure of interviewing and talking to him. Uh, this time around, he is the author of a new bestselling book called Flat Earth, Do Women Have a Place? So, RH, welcome to the stream. <laughs> How's it going, man? So, uh, that's not what the publisher told me it's going to be called. Um, okay, I... I disavow. I yes, I'm I'm here though. I, my name is RH Max, so there you go. You got that one correct. Hold on, I, I got to double check my schedule here. Are you trying disavow, to disavow? Disavow that you are not the author of Flat Earth. Do women have a place in it? Uh, it's it's complicated, but I'm gonna go with uh, <laughs> not not in the first minute of the stream. Uh, maybe we'll get, we'll get into it. Get up, get to warm me up. You gotta take me out to dinner first, okay? Okay, right. okay, my bad. I think that's probably a guess for next week. Anyways, forget all that. Uh, <laughs> RH Max, how you doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. Yeah, it's, it's exciting times in the ecosystem. Uh, Pulse could launch at any moment or could not at all. So there's that. It's a, you know, a lot of excitement. People are not so sad. It's not the bear market blues anymore. So that's, uh, that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. That's true. There's definitely a lot more excitement in the space for sure. And since we kind of, you know, touched on this issue already, let's delve into that further. You know, I mentioned in the green room beforehand that, you know, if you're kind of looking at Pulse Chain Hex Twitter, it seems like, you know, we're either coming out tomorrow or it's three, three to six months from now. I'm hearing plenty of contradictory things. Uh, what's your what's your take on all this? Yeah, it's so I'll preface this with I'm a validator or, or trying to be one. I'm like doing AMAs and, and uh, working through some of the stuff as the devs are making updates and things to the code. So I can tell you firsthand that there are some uh, there's some things to fix There's some testnet stuff it's all part of the experience though i mean that's there there are bugs to fix because we wanted to get a testnet that's the whole purpose it's not supposed to be polished anyone complaining that it's, it's not like there's too many bugs or it's not perfect i don't think they are quite um familiar with the dev cycle and how this stuff works but testnet is to put stuff out there have an mvp we know it's going to have bugs test all the stuff so uh, from what i've seen so far it is not ready to go and there's if you go in the pulse dev uh, telegram there's even a pinned post and our friend Somi uh, also posted it recently that I, I retweeted, which was a list of things that uh, the either issues or problems or nothing critical, nothing like that, but or features missing. So we need some more time, obviously. Like I, I said before Testnet came out, I'd say we at least need a month or two just as a, you know, someone with a dev type background. We need a month or two, let other projects test their stuff, release for the our Pulse Chain devs themselves to, to test the code and uh, let people find out all the bugs and let them fix it. So I'll be very hard pressed to say it's gonna launch this week uh, or next week uh, as, as I was talking in the green room, maybe there's something to do with April 12th, maybe depending on what, what Richard wants to do, um, if that's some kind of date that he wants to, I, it's so hard to say, like we don't know all the information. So if he, if he has some kind of plans around Shanghai that could play into it as well. But I, I would say I don't think we're launching before April 12th and it's more likely that it's not going to, it's definitely not going to be this week in my opinion. It's uh, April or mid-May. Mid-May could be still in play here. Yeah. And I'm wondering if, if Richard's kind of uh, taking to any account, like, you know, the, the traditional sell in May going way in traditional, in the traditional finance world, if that's you're kind of playing into, you know, taking a, a consideration, if he's considering that uh, I saw, a dev on i think it was a, a show with kg who was trying to make it very very clear that rh is not timing the market i get a feeling that the internal dev team is kind of frustrated by that narrative uh of uh of you know richard kind of trying to time the market so who knows we'll see what we have seen as of late and i'm sure you've seen this but just to kind of share your thoughts so richard recently sent out uh, a, a tweet uh, on the uh, account that I'm not blocked on, saying uh, team, <laughs> team team doing projection today is looking at increasing the base reward factor by a thousand x for being a pulse chain validator. How do you feel about that recent piece of news? Yeah, so that when I saw that, I thought, hey, another piece of evidence saying that we're if, if Richard's still asking for feedback on numbers, how are we going to launch anytime? Right, like like that's th those are things that. Once you get feedback, it takes some time for the devs to test it, go run the numbers and see if it makes sense. And then after careful deliberation, those are the final stuff because 
you're not going to be changing that type of stuff in mainnet. Like that's way too confusing. People are going to be, be building websites and stuff around it. So all these, all these parameters need to be finalized by the time we get a mainnet. So that's one part. Um, and then the second part is, yeah, it was just the APY and stuff was, you know, I had heard numbers before. It's going to be a fraction of a percent. could be 2%. It could be larger. And I went into it, uh, you know, I having uh, played with the Ethereum testnet validators in preparation for Pulse Chain to get ready for the, to do stuff on air testnet and mainnet eventually, I had uh, went into it knowing that probably wouldn't be much money in it. I just wanted to kind of do a community service. I'm intellectually curious about this stuff because, you know, I love technology, have a dev background, uh, all those things. So it just kind of plays into, I, there can only benefit from spending time on this. Like not a lot of people know about it. I can help the community provide, you know, AMAs, documentation, scripts and stuff that I plan uh, to work on. So it was just, for me, it was just, a, it was not about the money part and, and making the APY anyways. I really don't care what it was. It was just about, hey, is this opportunity to help the community? So increasing it and all that, it sounds like with, you know, a certain number of validators, I believe it was 40K, it would get us up to uh, 3% APY. I believe those numbers you shared. Yep. And less if there's more validators and more if there's not. So um, I think on testnet now we have like 4K validators or so, but also heard that some of those are maybe left over from B2B. Maybe they're not working right now. They haven't switched over. They're kind of like, or it's just the devs themselves who are running all the validators. Not a lot of uh, other people testing stuff out yet. So those numbers may not be super accurate. So we may be in the hundreds or, you know, small thousands of actual individual users in the community running them. But uh, I'd like to see what happens on mainnet. I'd like to see, you know, uh, that how that works. That could be an opportunity. You could get a lot bigger APY if you're one of the first set of validators for, for a while. But uh, if full chain explodes like I think it will and like we all hope it will, then that, that APY may, may be going down and down and down because more people are getting involved. Right. Yeah. And, and even a small APY and something that's growing tremendously is uh, highly valuable. Now, yeah, I know the, pri the price counts into it too. So yeah, it's if it's a ghost, the pulse chain goes to a penny, we're going to have a lot of validators. Yeah. Like people see 2%, 3%, but it's 2% in what? It's 2% in one of uh, the, the best assets in all of crypto. So you know what I mean? Like it, it, a lot of the time, you know, when people either look at different DeFi things and liquidity providing things and they see 300%, well, there's a reason why that's 300%. 300% number one in what? And what's the risk? For getting that 300 percent so yeah. the 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 reward in what matters tremendously for sure now exactly um you said something very exciting in the green room uh which i want to get into as to you had some thoughts as to kind of what we're seeing uh with uh with kind of uh pulse chain uh updates to kind of get a more realistic timeline of things and i, and I really want to delve into that but before we do i think it mm -hmm. might be helpful uh, since I get the chance to now talk to you, kind of interview you, ask, sure. uh, I want to get to know you a little bit more. And I, I find this kind of question particularly interesting as a YouTuber, content creator myself. Um, what drives you to make content? Because you spend a lot of time doing this shit. I, I know, man, like how much time this takes, all the editing, the uh, the research involved, you know, you're feeling like you got to keep up all the time. What what drives you to make a channel? What drives you to keep doing this? Yeah, that's uh, a good question. It's, I think it just came from, so I've been following Richard for six years, plus or minus, and I've been pretty passive in the community until about a year or so ago. And I think I just, I always think when people ask me this question, I always think of, okay, was there a moment or was there a time or something I can reflect back on that kind of pushed me over the edge to get into content creation, to get into being even active on Twitter in the community and yeah. even talking to people because before I just, I was watching live streams. I wasn't really even talking to community or anything and I always go back to this you know this memory of him talking about on stream like people asking hey how can we help what can we do what you know what should we do in the community what's going to help us grow and he always uh, one of his answers he always gave was be have utility like be useful do something that matters like that makes impact that helps something grow and that is it's definitely something you know being a person who I, you know I like projects I like taking something an ideal and turning it into real life I like, you know, do it, taking it, pushing it to the highest extreme, doing excellent work. I'm someone who likes to do that kind of thing with any project I work on. And for me, this is just another project, streaming, uh, helping the community, doing the dev stuff, uh, providing information, analyzing situations and, and based on my different skills, you know, security background. I do a lot of security AMAs, uh, more, more so these days now. It's just a project for me to 
provide utility, provide value and uh, help the community where I can. So it's, it's just one of those things. I like doing it because I know that uh, people out there appreciate it. I know that I'm making an impact. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you're going to be in the community and you want to see us grow, if you're, if you really want to have an impact, you got to go do something, whatever your skills are, whatever you're interested in, like make a positive impact. And it's not just arguing on Twitter or retweeting drama and all that stuff. Like, like creating content, for example, as you mentioned, uh, you know, doing streams, clipping thumbnails, all that stuff. I didn't know how to do any of that when I first started, but I was like, Hey, you know, here's what I'm going to do. Here's my project. I know it's going to take time to get good at it. I'm just going to keep going towards it until I feel like, you know, I'm at a good flow state and then maybe I'll slow down a little bit. It still hasn't happened yet. I feel like I'm streaming every day, sometimes twice a day. Um, but I think it's, uh, I think it's been helpful. I get a lot of good feedback from the community as well. So value it's like, a, it's not, you know, I, I have a, I try to have a unique brand. Like I don't monetize. I don't want your money. I want to make my own money. I just want to, you know, help everyone else win as well. I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think a lot of people put out as many clips. You know, every day I have like different clips from different interviews coming out uh, or streams and AMAs. I'm doing like uh, Richard throwback Thursdays for two years. I have vintage and notable RH clips scheduled to come out and all that stuff. So I try to just, you know, whatever unique value I could bring, I try to bring that and try to build my brand around that. And, you know, eventually you want to be somebody that people can trust. You know, when you say something, it means something. And I think that's a reward in and of itself, too, to have the respect of the community and uh, just be able to make a positive difference. So for me, like I, I, I've said it before, you know, if I ever disappear one day, I go by an island, whatever, uh, everything goes to the moon. At least uh, everyone, I hope everyone would be like, yeah, you know, that's cool. He, he was a good guy. He, he contributed enough. He did enough. He can do whatever he wants now. Uh, but that's, uh, yeah, that, I think that's what motivates me. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's really cool to hear. Um, you know, to kind of build on top of like some of what we touched on here, you know, you mentioned it seems like you had kind of quite a history even before crypto in terms of you said you like you did uh, security stuff, dev kind of stuff. If, if this is this is something I'm uh, very much interested in what I'm about to ask me is it I think not only does it relate to crypto specifically, but personal development in general. Uh, and if, if you see smoke, my house is not on fire. It's a candle. Anyways. <laughs> Candles, very appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. It's just cold where I'm at. <laughs> but um, no, so so what I'm trying to get to is I want you to perhaps take a moment to look back on, number one, this is the success you've had in crypto, but also just personally, personal development-wise, career-wise, if you had to give advice as to how you have found that success, both in investing or, or maybe if you want to take the investment front or personal development front in careers, just in your personal life, when it comes to investing, you know, if you had to kind of like uh, give advice to a, you know, your nephew or something, what, how, how would you go about doing that? Well, there's a lot of different, a lot of your angles and, and ways to get into on that uh, as, as someone who's been, I've been on like a wealth, uh, wisdom, happiness journey for the last few years as well trying to soak up a lot of knowledge from Richard, uh, Naval Ravikant, um, Alex Ramosi, a lot of different wise people in the world that uh, provide their own you know, value in different angles. Um, but as far as, you know, I actually made a tweet today that's pretty relevant, I think. Um, and it, it was basically talking about, I was trying to think of how, how do I better explain it? Because I, you know, I talk to friends and family about, you know, this stuff sometimes. And I'm always, I never want to make any guarantees. I never want to make any promises, but you know, of course, and deep down in my heart, I know this is, I know I have the winning plays. I know this community is the best real products, you know, it can get you rich, make the right decisions. You got to hold and all that stuff. And I was thinking of how to explain, how to explain to people, how to get them out of that, how to get past that no coiner mentality of it's just a gambling thing. You're just going to lose your money. You're just rolling the dice. That's not a real investment. Like, when are you going to stop doing that? I don't believe you. I don't, all that's, it, and it's, I don't, I don't want to go back to like, hey, have I ever lied to you before? <laughs> have I ever told you about something? I, I was super passionate about it and been wrong about it before. I want to get past even my track record or any of that stuff. And I want to drill down into like the mindset of getting people past this idea that you tell them about crypto and then maybe they get in, maybe they don't. Let's say they, they even get in, they get past the first stage and then they just treat it like this slot machine. It's just this gambling thing that they do and they just throw money in places and hope it gets better. And they, and they sell as soon as they can. 
get out of that? How do you get them out of that mentality? And the tweet I had today was just talking about very, very short, but just talking about how just getting people away from this gambling thing and into an investment. How can they believe that crypto is an investment after they see scam after scam fall down, get sued by, you know, um, SEC and FTX founder arrested and like all that stuff. Like that's not helping either, but how do we get them once we are able to tell them about a product that actually works? How do we get them into the mindset of you can make life changing wealth with this if you do these steps without already being a billionaire yourself? How do you do that? That's been a struggle for me. And it's, I haven't quite, I feel like it always comes back. I talked to Maxim broadcast about this. You know, we, we've do, but we do wealth mindset and mad gains mindset and, and different streams like that. And it really comes down to like you, you like in order to tell people this, they need to see you. And I'm not saying, I think people do believe I'm successful in my real life and, and all this stuff too. So I don't think that's a big problem, but I'm not a billionaire, for example. So they don't look at me, you know, it's, it's like, as soon as you get extremely rich, you're, you're, you're a genius. You're super smart. Everyone wants to listen to you. Everyone wants to get that advice. But when you're not, when you're not like that picture perfect, when you haven't, when you're still working uh, your job and stuff, everyone thinks, oh, maybe it'll work out. Maybe it won't, but I'm not going to spend time doing it. So that's been the big struggle for me is how do I get past that? And how do I, how do we avoid this tragedy of when, you know, when you do make it sky high, you never have to work again in your life, you're setting up trusts and, and all this stuff. How do you not how do you avoid the tragedy of everyone around you? You need to get new friends or something because everyone else is going to be working forever. They already missed out, even though you've been telling them time and time over. So if anyone has a secret to that, let me know. I've tried a few different strategies. And at the end of the day, I think it just comes down to it's either meant to be or not. People are going to either going to get in because that they're meant to, like it's literally like a spiritual manifestation type of thing, or they're not. And you got to be okay uh, with just, uh, you know, people not rising with you and just, you know, you, you rising above them, I guess, in a way. Yeah, th- there's there's like an issue. I-, I think a good way of framing it is like, you know, you could lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You could want like, hey, mother, drink you horse, but <laughs> there's no, the horses want to drink. There's only so much you can do. I it's, think it's a tragedy because I really want, and again, I've, I've said this before, I can want to help people. I want to like, yeah. I want to, I want all the boats to rise with it, but how do you, how do you get them there? How do you make that water so attractive and so trustworthy and them to know it tastes so good? that they go there and they stay there. How do you do that without, you know, showing them somebody drinking that water and turning into uh, you know, uh, a dragon or something, uh, something amazing happening from it. I was going to say, I, I think one way, cause I, I feel the same as you do that we can kind of cope with this issue is, is I think framing it in this way that our kind of content, I think attracts the horses that are willing to drink the water. So even though in our personal lives, we may be having, you know, we may be leading these horses to water and they may not be drinking, which is unfortunate, but in doing the content we do, it's like, we're filtering, we're selecting for those horses that are willing to drink the water in the first place kind of thing. Right. Um, and, and no, man, it, it is, it is so tough. It's tough. Cause you, you know, you want your friends, you want your family to get rich with you, right? Like it's, you want, you know, the people close to your life to get out the hood with you. I, I feel the exact same way, right? Like, you know, I'm at the point where I have friends who, like, I, I, you know, I, I mentioned crypto and I just be like, ah, enough, right? You know, enough. You've been talking about this stuff for years. But, you know, and uh, if this works out, if I don't get hacked, you know, I'm sure we're all going to be in similar positions where people are going to be wishing and praying that they would have uh, paid attention. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a hard one for sure, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's tough. It's like, it's like this, it's crazy. The thing about human nature, they need to, people want to buy high and sell low. They never want to do the opposite. They always want to do the wrong thing. And it's this, I explained that before. Uh, I think here's one analogy. It's, it's, I think it's this native primitive instinct we have as humans. We want to see someone else drink that water and then see what happens to them before we go drink it. But that is yeah. so, so we don't die or whatever, you know, yeah. in, back a thousands of years ago. Yeah, because like, and, and you almost get it too, because you don't want to suffer fools. Like, like I, I read a book called uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, and one big takeaway of that book is Fantastic there's book. one of my favorite great book. I forget the name of the character, but uh, he had a little bit of money and he gave uh, some, I think it was like someone who made bread to, to make him shields or something. And then, like the old wise rich guy said, "Ha ha, you shouldn't have done that. If you know, you go to the uh, to the uh, guy who makes." Uh, metal to make metal shields you don't go to the bread guy and you end up losing his money so there is kind of this innate feeling in everyone to not suffer fools which 
is like a generally speaking works most of the time, but it also kind of like when you apply a rule that works most of the time, it, there are those circumstances where it doesn't always work, right? I think perhaps moving forward, trying to select for those people who have a drive to try and and uh, and and reach a higher goal, but don't necessarily have a path or a framework to get there. I think that's kind of the only effective way of, of deploying your, your efforts because hmm. if not, you're just, you know, you're, you're trying to push shit up a hill. It's like uh, as, as hard as you try, it's, you know, yeah. it's going all around you. It's, it's a losing fight, right? Well, so, well, well, there's two things. Though. Like the other thing you pointed out too. So one is, I think it's the prim- what, what I would blame for not being able to be successful in, in these niche areas like crypto that are unbelievable, never been seen before, all that stuff. So one is the primitive instinct of, I need to see someone else be successful, ultra successful before I want to take that risk because primitively drink the drink, drink or eat the wrong thing. People die. Your survival instinct kicks in, blah, blah, blah. So that's one. And then two, what you pointed out is, or what I guess I can, I can follow up on is p- the feeling of there's a mental model around this too. The feeling of losing hurts and is worse and people avoid it more than the feeling of winning. And I forget what mental model that is, but it's like the, um, it's, it's not risk aversion, but basically people would rather, not lose then win like have like then go for the chance of winning most people and, right. and again filtering them out and, and stuff like that it, it, this is one way to do it yeah, right it's like the feeling of pain is is almost worse than the you know uh euphoria of of, of success right that's yeah and a, there's different yeah. you know levels and spectrums to it too but generally that's why most people avoid things risky investments what they see as risky at least is because they don't want to be that full that, right. that then they, they enjoy not being that full more than, oh, what if I win a little bit? And they don't even, they can't even understand the exponential gains in crypto. So they can't even factor that into their decision as well, or, or maybe different. Yeah. Ah, oh, oh, it's so tough. Okay. I, I, you know, I want to get into some strategies and, uh, and ways of thinking in order to, m- to mitigate the risk of one's own emotions. I'll get to that later on. But uh, before we do, I really want to uh, get back to uh, your view on how to think about these updates with Pulse Chain. This was something super interesting that you mentioned beforehand. I think this is kind of a a new thing uh, you haven't talked much about quite just yet. Do you want to frame this, kind of explain to the people how you've come up with thinking about these Pulse Chain updates? Sure. So I've been thinking about there's a few different ways, a few different indicators I want to go through. And some I've talked about before, at least one I haven't. And I think it's a, a pretty important one too. I, maybe I've alluded to it, but I haven't really like did it in a form discussion like this before. So first of all, I want to say none of these require any special skills or exclusive access. You don't need to be in a paid group. You don't need to like all this public information. There's no secrets. And I, you know, yeah, it reminds me like you have some of these extreme money maximalist people who are, you know, in the community, they're not or whatever. And then, they don't want to share information. I don't know. Just the transparency thing is a little annoying to me sometimes. I'm like, you know, it'll be on the stream. Oh, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. Don't give the people that. I'm like, man, like I, I want to help the community here. I, I don't, you don't need to have, I don't need to have all these secrets. So these are things I want to share with you all. I would say the three big things and anyone can look at this. Anyone can do this again. Don't need special skills. Maybe you need a little bit of tech skills for some of them. But first of all, base, I'll start with the basics, the hex price. So perhaps people in the last few days have been voting with their money. Yeah, there's one theory for you. Uh, you know, we were at 12, 13 cents on May at launch. And then now, uh, yesterday at least, I think we're up a little bit now, but we, we went around uh, seven or eight cents. So to me, uh, my first thought was, well, people don't think Pulse Chain is that close because it makes no sense to sell right before the fork. Like you, like if anyone in this community knows anything, they think that uh, the, all the coins are gonna have a value once the pulse chain fork happens, it is hex. So you're going to want that PX copy. So that's one thing. So looking at the hex price, if you, for example, if you see it go lower, you know, to me that says, unless there's just going to be some crazy, you know, uh, four hour run up before launch and then just literally get the greenest candle you've ever seen in your life. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it'll be gradual again. Uh, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. Um, so that's something you want to look for. So hex price. Second thing is LP. So uh, th- that kind of ties into LP positions as well. It would make sense for the LP to be pulled because as far as I know, your Uniswap LP position, which is kind of like a special NFT, 
isn't getting getting copied over pulse chain. You know, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that's the case. A lot of people have been talking for a while that LP is likely to be pulled. Hex price volatility is going to be crazy at that time because people are going to want their PX copies. They're going to want that those liquid or or staked, of course. It's, we know get those get copied over. So recently, I wrote a tool. Um, I wrote some code, as as a dev might do. Um, and you can run locally, and I can share the link and stuff as well. I have it on my GitHub. But if you know how to use Python, know how to use command line, uh, it basically you can use it to get the number of hex uh, in the liquidity pool. And Hedron, it supports hex and Hedron. You can get, uh, it, it just goes through a few different pools, mostly the biggest pools. And it'll tell you how much USD liquidity is there. And, and then you can also track it. You can say, okay, over some time period, uh, if it goes, uh, you know, after four hours, eight hours, whatever it is, if you, if you notice a 10% change, 20% change, some big swing, that could be a sign of liquidity changing. Maybe it's getting pulled. It just, you know, okay, I need to go investigate. I need, I detect something may be happening. So that's, that's another uh, way, an indicator that something around launch may be happening. You may see liquidity move around. And then the third one is the one I haven't really talked about much, which is the transparency Certificate transparency reports. So big words, nobody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, it basically, it reminded me around uh, around the testnet launch, we saw some people talking about DNS, some different domains coming online. And I, that reminded me, like, oh, wow, that's, that would be an easy thing to write or easy thing to check would be like if we could, if we could look at the different certificates being published because all this public information, you know, you can look at the transparency reports, you can look at, certificates for different domains being published when people register them or, or create certificates, all that. You can see the domains that exist. Uh, you can use, you know, different information to put together. There's different services offer this. There's different code that you can use to track this stuff. And, you know, for example, if you see one day you see mainnet.pulsechain.com get registered or a certificate created, hey, indicator, right? So there's ways to do this. You can Google and, and find out different services that can help you or, or code. If, you, if you're a coder, you can write the stuff yourself to, to look at it. There's different frameworks. But that is another sign that uh, you, could, you could use to say, okay, if something interesting looks registered and it's not testnet, or maybe it's something to, in testnet, you just want more information about, it. you know, RH or otherwise hasn't talked about. That's one way you can get more information. Again, all public information. It's all, all fair, all fair game. So those are the big three, I would say. And the fourth one, uh, that's, I don't think is being very utilized right now that I tweeted about, I think a few weeks ago, if you're not subscribed, the pulse chain, GitLab updates, you're missing out. So I just about every day I see in my, in my inbox, I see updates for code or merge requests or documentation updates or something going on. So the devs are working on stuff and I'll just drop this link. I'll put it in the private chat. Cause I, I imagine I'm not a mod in this channel yet but i'll drop it here so you can post it and that is a uh, i went through exactly how to subscribe to uh, gitlab updates so when they make changes and repos that are public now they may make private changes and you can't see those or no no much information but the public updates you can see and you can track those and if you know what's going on or you can you can try to read into them if you want but that, that's another way to get information to try to put some of the pieces together so those are four different ways. Everything else is just guessing, speculation. Even what RH says, you know, you go back, he's been saying launch is closed for two years now. So if he says this is your last shot, again, I, I don't take everything he says with uh, definite certainty. But those are four things I think that you can use as indicators to try to put some of the pieces together. And, you know, if, if you're doing them and other people aren't, maybe you can give, your, give yourself a leg up, all public information. That is such a great way of, of thinking about this. I'm so glad you put this in tangible terms because everyone's grasping for straws, trying to read the tea leaves and read into what you know each and every tweet means and the frequency of tweets and all this stuff. But th these are very, very tangible updates, spe specifically the GitLab. Now, as I'm kind of you know hearing you say all these things, I think you know. One of the things I think we're all asking ourselves is, okay, we're kind of periodically all getting these kind of series of updates to the GitLab, to these tweets, these all these things. But how do we know which one of these updates is the one that kind of really signals we're getting close here? Now, I have a tweet from Hexologist I want to bring up here in a second. But one thing I want to bring up before we get there is 
your point about the liquidity uh, providers. That's a very, very interesting thing to kind of dwell on because liquidity providers are presumably, you know, we can argue the point here, smart money, whales, people who have a large financial interest in getting this right. And we're not just saying, you know, their behavior is 100% guaranteed to be the most optimal way of playing this, but they have some, they have financial incentive to attempt to try and, and time things somewhat right. And you're right that perhaps, you know, when they do start to withdraw from their LPs, that might be the sign that, hey, we're getting close. And what I'm thinking is, as we get all these updates in the GitLab and all, all those kinds of things, whatever one of these updates triggers the uh, the liquidity pull, that's probably the update that kind of matters in terms of us getting closer. Do, do you understand what I'm trying to get at here? And would you agree with that? Well, that's why I wrote some of the code to track it too, because it's, it's. I think I think when we see people pulling mass amounts of liquidity, and and even there's a uh, there's the I think Hex, Hex Well, the Well Bot, it's even said before about liquidity being pulled. And had I known better before, I may have thought, oh, wow, something's you know, maybe something's about to happen. Although I knew testnet was coming and stuff like that. So it probably wouldn't be a mainnet suggestion. But you can see it. You can get alerts from that too. But yeah, I mean, that's if you want to get your copy, as far as I know, if you are holding liquidity, you're not going to get, uh, you're not going to get a copy of that you can use on PulseX, for example, because there's no, not going to be any Uniswap uh, on pulse chain, as far as I know. So yeah, that would be, you would, they would want to pull liquidity, have it liquid or staked, whatever, get their copy and then put it back afterwards and do whatever they want, bridge it over. So I think liquidity is a, is a big sign, but how do you track that? Again, it's like, I wrote some code to do it. You can use uh, hex, the, the well bot that, that says all the extreme transactions that are happening, the buying and selling. And it's talked about liquidity before, or you just listen to TA people or, or people on stream that uh, want to talk about these, these things going on. But uh, to me, yeah, that's, that is, that is one indicator that something big is about to happen, especially since we're in testnet B3. Richard says it's the final one. This is not going to testnet B4. It doesn't look like. So main, if mainnet's next and you see liquidity being pulled, that sounds like, looks like a sign to me. If it's if it's like really drying up and and then you got other people looking at it and you, you see all the tweets, oh, look at all the stuff, like from trusted people, right? That would right. be a sign for me. Absolutely. Now, okay, I'm not sure if you saw this tweet, but I want to pull one up from Hexologist. I want to know if this means anything to you or if this is kind of just uh, one of the many updates that we have to look forward to. So Hexologist was tweeting, you know, we're seeing some kind of uh, updates here, but specifically kind of the main takeaway is prepare for stable release. Now, I saw someone uh, kind of Google what this means or they asked uh, ChatGBT uh, and basically, here it is. Uh, it, this means it's too, it's uh, this phrase describes the state of no that's not anyways it basically means that uh, they're they're preparing to ship the final version of the code ah uh, yeah here it is so in the context of cryptocurrency software development preparing a stable release typically means that the development team is finalizing the latest version of their software and making it ready for public release so does this change stretch. the situation at all I think that's a stretch I mean stable release could be. I don't know. I feel like when we're looking at it, it's you kind of want to read into it. You want to like, oh, stable release means mainnet. So in the dev world, if you were to ask me without, you know, I'm kind of tainted now by seeing the chat GPT thing. But if you were just ask me like, because I haven't seen this before, what stable preparing for stable release means. I mean, that could be something public. That could just be the next version. That could be another. I mean, what context are they, like? I would need to look at that URL a little bit further and see which project they're talking about because, you know, they could be talking about a particular client uh, and a, a new stable release. They could be merging in something from the outside to a new, a new release version there. Just because they're changing version numbers, that wouldn't give me an indication. I mean, however, I can't rule it out. I, can't, I mean, if I were going to read the most liberally possible into stable release, you could, I guess you could say that's mainnet, but... I wouldn't, I'm not alarmed by that. I, I would say that that's not, to me, that's not, it's not that there's a lot of different ways to interpret that. And I would have to look at the URL before I, I say for sure, whether that's, that's exciting to me or not. I have to look a bit further into it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't, we don't need to delve too long on that. But, but I assume based on what just briefly the 10 seconds I looked at it, I, I'm not super excited about it, but I do want to take a second look. Now I know we, we kind of touched on this, but I, I want to bring it back because this is interesting. You're, you're, you're trying to be a validator, is that correct? 
Yeah. Yeah. How, I, I've how's, been, yeah. Go on. I just say I've been prepping. So I think in January, February, I started practicing with Ethereum testnet. Uh, which was a mess, and which should have been because 8.2.0 threw everyone a wrench. And now they're trying to figure out documentation, how to figure all this stuff out. Um, but yeah, I started practicing there. And thankfully I did because it's not easy. You need to be pretty technical to, to pull this stuff off by yourself. Uh, I think I was doing an AMA last night and somebody asked like, you know, could, could I do it? You know, if I, if you don't have a lot of technical skills or whatever. And my response was not right now. <laughs> I think that the community, David Feeder just released a tutorial this morning along with a script that automates a bunch of stuff. So shout out to him. He'll be on the show Friday. It's what we'll be talking about a lot of this stuff. Um, but I think right now there's not a lot of easy buttons to do it. In the future, however, maybe this year, maybe next, I, I hope Alex and Hedron builds the plug and play validators where you just configure it like you would a router, super easy. I hope that uh, the community, maybe myself, will be contributing some scripts or blogs, tutorials on, on how to make this process a lot easier. But me, I mean, having a working in tech for a long time, having a, a dev, dev like background, all this stuff, writing code, it took me a while to wrap my head around these concepts to actually understand it. Um, I mean, anyone can go type in a bunch of commands and hope it works correctly, but to actually know what you're doing, to know what a beacon uh, client is uh, versus a validator client, versus an execution client and all this stuff and like actually understand what your computer is doing. That takes some, that takes some brain power and some work and some research, even if you already have a tech background. So you're basically taking easy. a college course on this stuff to get it right. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, you could say like, you know, people say all oh, self-taught, self-taught developer, self-taught coder, self-taught validator could be like a semester course of something like it's, it's that, uh, that much information. Yeah, absolutely. And not like a one-on-one. It'd be like a, you know, like two, 200 class, 300 class, that type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I wanted to ask you point blank. Do you have a hex next cycle all-time high price prediction? What is it? Set it in stone. We want 100% guarantees. <laughs> I uh, hate to disappoint you, but I, I try my best to avoid price predictions because I don't like to be wrong. Yeah. And I don't believe anyone knows. However, uh, I love them when you give them on my show. I, I do love that. But yeah, I just, um, I, I my, my answer is, is usually uh, look at what it did in the past. Look how much, how many more people we have now. Look at what's being built around it. Look at what's being already built on top of it. Look at what depends on it. Look at the billion dollars in it. And then you decide whether it's going to go up or down. I, I think that's uh, the way I look at it. It's an unsatisfactory answer, but a smart one because I, I because I totally agree with you. Giving like these fixed arbitrary price, it's total just pulling something out of your ass. It's just for fun. I, I think personally, timing analysis and and looking out for signs of market weakness is a far more tangible. You know, getting it, it's a it's a way of trying to get closer from complete randomness. Right? It's not like a perfect way of doing things but at least it's not like completely random and pulled out of your ass it's somewhere on the, on the spectrum right yeah. so yeah i agree I, I just want to say real quick i just noticed your whole background deal is like all the failed stuff <laughs> and I, I first thought it was like black is he sponsored by black and i saw safe moon and i'm like wait a minute and i see carlos matters i'm like hold on a second and i look up and i see luna and solana and all this stuff i'm like all right, this is definitely a joke. It's very cool. Very I cool. gotta update this too, by the way. This is this is like from way back when. I gotta put FTX here. I gotta put uh, uh there's there's this, <laughs> there's a couple there's more failures, yes. To, oh yeah, to put on here. Amazing. Yeah, so uh yeah, I'm sure over the years this will be quite a uh, collage we could put here. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, so well, I'm hoping too. I'm hoping there <laughs> I'm hoping uh there won't be too many more this year. Hopefully we got it all in the way because uh, you know, in my mind that would be like bottom right no more failures is, is hopefully we bottomed or no more big failures because every time we you know, like every time we hit a failure there's like another chance for regulation another chance for people oh, to sell another yeah. chance so i'm hoping ftx block five whatever those were the big ones and uh we can just we can just go right off in the sunset in our in our moon bags but uh who knows you know speaking of these failures in an attempt to avoid, you know, either being or, or falling in the same trap as these guys, I wanted to ask you because I know you like to talk about security a lot. If you had to give a two-minute elevator pitch to kind of, uh, you know, a, a novice crypto investor as to what are the best practices in terms of security, crypto security, 
you know, two, you know, two, three minute elevator pitch. How would you do that? Yeah, easy. Um, I, I think that I'm, I'm not going to talk about hardware wallets because this answer everyone gives and that you should already know. If you're in crypto, you should know about hardware wallets in some shape or form. If you don't, obviously that's that's a, like a big part of it, keeping your wallet safe. It's like putting 2FA on your wallet. Think about it like that. They're great. Um, so besides that, use a Mac. If you're running Windows, it's like you're driving down the bad neighborhood and you're like, you know, you're the sketchy neighborhood. And you're like, oh, look. all the viruses are like the people that may jump you and all that stuff. They're everywhere. It's crazy going down a bad neighborhood. So if you if you use Mac, nice neighborhood, nice ha- security guard, security guards there. You know, people are walking around with their kids. Everything's good. Nice neighborhood. So Mac, uh, because of low market share, everyone uses Windows. So they get targeted by all the malware. If you don't want to be targeted by malware, use something that's not Windows, aka Mac. You can use a tablet, you can use whatever else too, but as a desktop or laptop, you know, computer, I recommend Macs just because you avoid so much garbage on the internet just by using Macs alone. There's no EXEs on Macs, so you can't download one or run it. It's, it's amazing. So one, stop using Windows. Two, I would say another thing that can just really save you money and stop giving you a false sense of security is stop using a VPN at home. So VPNs have been bastardized. It's like a bastardized term these days. Retail, these companies got into them. Hey, we're going to make a lot of money, all this stuff. And they are good for working remote. If you have a job where you need to dial into the office remotely, connect to the corporate network, cool. If you're traveling and you want to avoid censorship or whatever, cool. If you uh, want to connect to public Wi-Fi and you're super paranoid, although I think a lot of those attacks are kind of gone away with modern browsers, VPNs, cool. If you use one at home, I don't know why. I don't know any other security person in the world that does that. And unless you want to change your IP address to be something else, which you can just use Tor or use a free proxy. So if you're paying for a uh, at-home security uh, VPN subscription, security guy can't tell you why he would ever do it. And he doesn't know anyone who who does. So there's that. So save yourself some money at least and stop giving yourself some security. If you change your IP address, use Tor. Easy. Uh, and then how to actually keep your uh, computer up to date. And again, change your IP address more for privacy. In my opinion, nobody gets hacked with IP addresses these days. They get hacked by out-of-date browsers, clicking on EXEs, phishing, all that type of stuff. Maybe you know, get you you torrent, you download a torrent that you don't think is yours, and it does all this stuff. So I wouldn't worry about your IP address as much as keeping your browser up to date. Super boring, but the best advice ever because browsers are you know, people get you click on a link, they get you to download malware either through clicking through a bunch of boxes or exploiting a bug in your browser. So those three things is the best advice I can give other than the hardware wallet. Obviously use a Mac instead of windows. Don't waste your money on VPN at home. Only use it if you need censorship resistance, uh, traveling or actually doing remote work and keep your browser up to date. Don't worry about your IP address as much. Browser uh, malware is, is the bigger thing than that. I see. So, so I think it's main... like four minutes, but I think that was concise. <laughs> so, but... No, no, that was great. Uh, the main takeaway I got from that is that you're sponsored by Apple. That's all I <laughs> You know, they make great products. It just they makes do. sense for this partnership to happen. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I want to take the opportunity to ask a bit of a selfish question here. Because sure. I recently, uh, I don't know, a little while ago, made a video talking about how I sold my car in order to do this kind of uh, 10K uh, challenge where I want to put, I want to DCA 10K into Pulse, uh, kind of uh, show my... Uh, not, not like the, the wall, but I'm, I want to talk about it publicly, my my uh, my price targets, all that kind of stuff. What advice would you give to me? Not financial advice, but, <laughs> um, you know, could you share your thoughts as to what could be an optimal uh, strategy? Even generalize it. Even we can make it even more general, like pre-bridge, post-bridge. If you were someone in my situation and you had to give uh, not financial advice, advice. <laughs> <laughs> you're really you framing know? this well <laughs> um hmm. i think what what i could say would be useful here so your situation is you you sold everything and and, and put 10k into pulse is that so, that so i'll be doing a, a 10k uh so i'm just doing like a 100x challenge right trying to turn 10k into 1 million dollars um I'm going to oh. not follow anything you say, but this is what I'm trying to do. And if you were in my position, yeah, how would you DCA? Would you do it, you know, first day over the first week, first quarter? Like, how would you deploy 10K? Or, or if you're just trying to do a 100X challenge into Pulse Chain? So 10K once Pulse Chain launches. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. 
Yeah. Would you mark it by day one? Would you dollar cross average? Like, what are your thoughts in that regard? Mm, again, not financial advice in any way, shape, or form. Just thinking out loud what I would do if I was going to put 10K post Pulse Chain launch. I think you have a few options. I think, I mean, it's kind of sucks you missed the sack phase and all that. Um, but there's, you know, if there's a big dump, there's the opportunity. Uh, we don't know if it's going below SAC price or not. However, historically, a lot of a lot of new projects dump. So I would be looking for opportunities, the DC opportunities on the dump, assuming it happens. It, it may not happen. This time could be different. But uh, based on historical stuff, there could be a dump at some point uh, after launch. So that could be a chance to pick up some Pulse and Pulse X. And then on the Hex side, you know, because that would be the three coins that I would be targeting to stock up on. Um, I mean, there's some other good ones in the ecosystem, but on the hex side, it's hard to say what, what happens after pulse launch. I mean, I guess an obvious one, you could say that if hex runs up people buying it uh, into, to, to get their copies on the fork, you could say, okay, afterwards, both hexes should, should dump. I imagine like, I mean, again, that's not me saying it's going to happen, but I could see both hexes dumping after launch just because they were bought up so much before launch. And now you get the copy and a lot of people are just not going to value the copy. They're just not, no matter how good you tell them hex is and pulse chain, they're just not going to value it in airdrop. It's an airdrop. It's just that mental thing of getting it for free. They don't value it. So that's such a, like a human psychology thing. So I would be looking out for yeah, basically DCI, DCA opportunities. If once, once, and if there is a dump of, the, the blue chips, hex, pulse chain, and pulse X. That would be the the most, I don't know, uh, the most obvious thing that I would think about during that time. And hey, if I have dry powder on the side, um, I, yeah, I don't think that's the, the worst idea at least. But I don't think about it. I, you know, I, I think about, when I think about different plans around that, I don't really think about the dump. I, I You know, if I have some extra money, I wouldn't care to put it into it once I see a dump. But at the same time, I'm wondering what the deals are going to be. If there's going to be any deals on the pre-bridge, I probably wouldn't even participate in it, yep. but I will be looking at it and, and kind of keep my eye on it. And then how can I, I'll be looking for opportunities. How can I make yield? How can I lock myself away from selling? Uh, how can I put some aside that I, you know, that maybe I want to li get liquid if I see a hundred X or something happen. And then what uh, deals can I see or how can I stop myself from selling? Cause we don't really have that with Hex. That's one of my favorite features. And the reason I don't use HSIs for everything. I love HSIs, but I don't use them for everything is because I want to save myself for myself. I don't want to be tempted to get rid of a bag in a moment of weakness. So with Pulse and Pulse X, though, at least at least natively, you're on your own. Like there is no native way to lock it up uh, for a time lock type of thing like Hex. So I would be looking for hopefully some community projects will launch that'll let you do that type of thing, or at least maybe if not a time lock, at least let you lock it up. So you're earning enough to, to paying yourself enough. You're not tempted or it gives you a reason not to be tempted. So that's what I, yeah, that's what I would be looking out for. Interesting. Now um, I wanted to ask you a version of a question that, uh, that funny Jim asked me, which was, he presented me at the point, you know, us, we're, you know, us YouTubers, we're always speculating all the time, but if you had to put your money where your mouth is and either choose Pulse chain, pulse X, or hex, an arbitrary buy date and an arbitrary sell date. Meaning, like, let's say you had a thousand dollars and you, you could either market by pulse chain, market by pulse X, market by hex. You get to choose when, and you also get to sell it. And you also get to choose the date in which you sell it. What would you do? For example, I answered, I would dollar cost average into pulse chain two weeks after launch. And sell it, I think it was uh, April 2025. I forget, something like that. That's what I said because I, you know, my reasoning was, you know, I think Pulse Chain is the easiest to understand. Therefore, retail money will go to Pulse Chain. And then I think, you know, s selling sometime six months to a year after this Bitcoin having kind of makes sense. So that, that's kind of my rationale. How would you tackle this question? Completely hypothetical. Again, not financial advice. Uh, top of my head, I would think. Buying it, I could see buying it two to four months. I don't think two weeks. I think I think uh, just in my head here, I, I'm thinking, hey, maybe some kind of dump. But then I think it'll take a few months before 
we get a real uh, a real let go of hey hmm let's let's take some profit or see what else is going on or some other crypto thing macro event happens or whatever and I think there there could be more than one leg down later on so which could be the real you know bottom if 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 we're going into bull after that which you know we all hope we will so maybe two to four months afterwards uh, that could be yeah, an area of, of uh, that could be the you know, a cheaper area and then. I mean, who knows when the best top is? Yeah. I've heard you talk about 2025, 2024, 2025, 2026. They all, they all seem like bull, bull targets. So uh, I would say somewhere through there. I'll go two to four months in 2025, just just out of my no, – no data whatsoever, just uh, pure speculation. I hear you. No, it, it's it's so hard to know. It's, it's so wildly speculative. There's arguments for like you know a quick rip up. There's arguments for lifting cycles. Ultimately, nobody knows. We just got to kind of wait and see. Now – uh, we're running up against an hour here. Uh, I do want to wrap things up somewhat soon. Before I let you go, I want to ask you this. You know, you're called RH Max. With that being said, is there anything in the adjacent Pulse Chain community that you find interesting that you would either personally use or maybe that you would even personally diversify into? I mean, for example, you know, things like, uh, Power City, Time, Liquid Loans, Famous, Fiat. Are there any of these, and, and maybe others, uh, Mintra, whatever. Are there any kind of projects building around the Pulse Chain interest, uh, ecosystem that you find either interesting, you would personally use, or even consider personally diversifying into? Yeah, de definitely. I mean, the, the, the RH Maximus part is his ideals, first of all. And then his products naturally you know, become a part of that as well. So I, I, I'm not like a, a, a blue chip, an arch blue chip maximalist. I, I definitely like, you know, Hedron and Maximus ecosystem and uh, a few other projects that, that I'll, I'll talk about, but th just want to frame it like that first. It, I definitely am interested in other projects uh, that I see providing value. That's, so I have this whole thing of like, how do I, how do I determine which projects I'm interested in? And uh, like the first class of products would be uh, if they provide some kind of positive feedback loop, to hex or pulse or pulse hex stuff like that so for example derivatives uh and things built around it and, and all those, those type of uh, products you know hedron max and all that stuff those are perfect for that and the second type is like utility projects so things like maybe you know liquid loans that allow you to open up new features where you can lock it up take loans uh you know stable coin stuff provide real features that people want to use and that we need in the ecosystem Power City, you could put in there. Uh, they started doing the uh, the PulseX, uh, you know, lockup and borrowing and stablecoin type stuff as well. And then everything else is kind of like either meme coins or unknown, like, you know, Xerox Coast are building a fee on ramp. Everyone's bullish about that. We definitely need more information. Hopefully that that works out. Their weight product, we don't know what it's going to be used for, but there's there's like some, um, you know, that, that could, if, what if it ties into fee on ramps? I have no idea. But like, what if they tie it into that? What if they somehow make it have a use case after Pulse Chain launch? Because right now you can claim it up until it. And then, you know, what happens afterwards? Uh, hopefully it's just not this like temporary meme coin type of thing. I, I, I hope not. You know, a lot of people think that. I, I think they said uh, that it might be used to reduce the fees from an onboarding, offboarding, or anything. Okay. Yeah, that would yeah. be. So I, I hope so. I hope, it, you know, everyone who believes in that project and uh, and all that, I hope hopefully it has a use case and, but those are the that type of categories where I'm like, okay, you know, positive feedback loop, true utility, obvious utility, uh, you know, gives more than it takes away, you know, for splitting buying pressure and all that stuff. And third category is like either meme coins or unknown, wait and see, uh, or just like a, a moonshot, like, hey, this could bring a lot of people in for onboarding, but we really don't know yet. Right. So that's how I determine which ones I like. And then, um, yeah, I mentioned a few of the products that I like in that as well that would fit in those categories, right? So that's how I look at it. I know everyone's got their own thing and there's a lot of DJing, gambling and a lot of, I bought the coin, I got the airdrop. So it's good because maybe I can like step on everyone one day and all that stuff. I, I don't really subscribe to that. So I'm just, uh, that, that's how I kind of rate my projects and which ones I like. Right on. Perfect. Okay. Final question here. So, um, oh my God, it was on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> it's good. Uh, no, what was I going to say here? Is there anything we haven't touched upon yet that you think is, uh, is, is worth mentioning here? I mean, you know, we're all excited about, you know, Pulse Chain, uh, you know, coming here, all this news. 
I don't want you to give advice, but if you had to give some wisdom as to how to think about this upcoming, you know, uh, testnet finishing up, mainnet launching, is there any wisdom you could share to the people in, in regards to this upcoming mainnet? Hmm. I think everyone just needs to decide what they're here for. That's something that is very important to me. I, I, I pride myself on being mission driven and I pigeonhole myself into RH Maximus because I don't want to look outside the ecosystem. I know this is the best one. It's did a lot uh, for me and my family so far. Got a long way to go. And I think it really gives people a fair shot at crypto and DeFi. Something that's missing out there as we see everything fell, fall around us. So I think being mission driven and, uh, you know, I like, I like the way Maxim says it is like, don't lie to yourself. Like if what, whatever you're doing, you know, what, whatever kind of hopium you're in, try to be grounded in some kind of reality and know that your actions, um, you know, you put, put out positivity, you put out negative stuff, you do the drama on Twitter, you're going to get negative back. You, I believe you get out what you put in. So um, I think that being mission driven keeps you, on a path to get what you want. But first you got to figure out what it is you want. If you don't know what you want, that's fine. Getting rich is a, a, that's a fine goal. Uh, I always like Naval Ravikant's uh, expression is like, uh, first get rich and then figure out what you want to do because you, you may not even know what that is yet. Right. So that would be my advice is like be mission driven, figure out what you want, define your principles, stick to them, be consistent have utility in the community, like you know, full circle back to my, my origin story as well. And uh, again, don't lie to yourself about what you want, because if you start doing that, you're was that Charlie, uh, Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett, like uh, you're, you're the easiest person to fool, you know, all that stuff too. So figure out what you want. And if you don't know what you want, just try to do a lot of good stuff and try to stick to your principles until you get there, you get to whatever goal you have, and then you'll have the time resources and energy to, to really explore what it is you want to get out of this life. Cause we only got one. So uh, I don't plan on, on being boring or stuck or a wage slave. And uh, I think we, we can all do great things if we're, if we're mission driven. Hell yeah, man. That's a great way to wrap things up. I don't think I can top that. So everyone <laughs> like and subscribe, share the stream. I put RH's info down in the description below. Everyone go give him a follow. Uh, number one, thank you so much for being on the show, man. I, I think this is pretty interesting. And thank you all for watching. And uh, if you don't have any final words, then I guess we can wrap up here. Yeah, just, just smash all the buttons. Uh, glad you got uh, the new channel going. Uh, best of luck on that. And thanks for, and thanks for having me. And, and thanks for the good questions. Like you, I tell you prepared. You ask good questions. And I uh, try to answer the best of, my, best of my consciousness. Absolutely. Appreciate it. All right, y'all. Sure. Take care. Yeah.